When music gets hard, come see Professor Lee. Thank you. Hey guys, I'm Professor Lee Goof, and today we got a lot to review between figuring out if chords are major or perfect according to their intervals, then the qualities of those chords, is it going to be major, minor, augmented, diminished, or perfect, and then how to invert those chords, and then to finish off with scales and the formula for major scales. And as long as you know the formula, you can basically write out any major scale. Again, so that was a lot, so let's just get right to it. So what we'll start by doing is writing out the chords themselves, because you have to, the, the only way you're going to know if, is if they're major or perfect is depending on their intervals. So we'll do our first interval here, which will be a second. And then our third, then the fourth, if you can tell, the bottom note stays the same, so it's always going to be C because we're in treble clef. The bottom note stays the same, and it's just the interval is the distance between two notes. So you know this is going to be a fifth because you're going to count from the bass note, which in this case is C. One, two, three, four, five. Five lines and spaces. And it's going to be right there. And that's how you know that's a fifth. If we continue, count up six. One, two, three, four. Five, six. Make sure you always start with your bass note when you're counting them so you know you get the correct interval. And that would be there. And the last one. Which will be a full octave from low C to high C. Alright. So now knowing that you can figure out the interval of any of these chords just by counting the lines and spaces in between. Now we can break down how to figure out which ones are major and which one are perfect. Which ones are perfect. So we're going to, these will be our major ones. I'm just going to put M for major. That, our second uh, interval. An interval, a chord with an interval of two will be major. An interval of three will be major. An interval of 6 will be major, and an interval of 7 will be major. The rest will be perfect. This is going to be something you're just going to have to memorize, because uh, we have not went over yet how to know, or the reason behind why some are major and some are perfect. So, anyway, so you're just going to have to remember that the 2nd, 3rd, 6th, and 7th are just major chords. And the 4th, 5th, and 8th interval are perfect. Also, another perfect chord is the unison chord. Whereas if you just had two Cs next to each other, that would be a perfect chord as well. So unison, 4, 5, and 8 will be the perfect chords. So now that we got that down, we can start figuring out the quality of these chords. So for example... Let's practice using a couple of these chords. So let's say I have a chord that starts on low C. Again, we're in treble clef. It starts on low C and goes up to G. First, let's figure out how many intervals this is. So we count from C. So you count C first, so one. And then the space underneath the line is two. The line is three. The space is four. And the line is five. So we know this is going to be an interval of five. Now, we have to figure out if it's major or minor. I'm sorry, if it's major or perfect, which we just go to our handy dandy little chart here, and we figure out is five major or perfect. It's perfect, so it's just going to be P5 is how we label that. Let's do another one. We have another low C, and we're trying, let's do this one. What's the interval spacing of that? Well, let's count, one, Three, four, five, six, seven. So that's an interval of seven. Is seven major or perfect? Major in this case. So that'll be M7 or a major seventh chord. It's pretty straightforward. And again, you guys should have already 
went over it in a broad sense anyway. The next thing we have to start to worry about is if our chords have the same bass note we've been using, like a C, but the other note has an accidental in front of it, which again is either a sharp or a flat or even a natural in some cases. But let's say this has a flat. Now we have to be like, you know, what, what kind is that? Well, we can figure out the interval at least. So one, two, three, four, five. So it's an interval of five. But now we don't know if it's going to be major or perfect because any of our major or perfect ones are all without accidentals. So our chart for figuring out accidentals is, I'll put it over here, is we'll have major in the middle. If it's a sharp, it's going to take major up to the signal for, the symbol for augmented. So that means augmented, excuse my handwriting. <laughs> or if you start at major and you go flat, that would be minor, so small m. Or if it's another flat, you go down to diminished, which is a circle. So got our handy dandy chart. Now, also that's only if the chord starts on a major chord. So that's only if it's our second, third, sixth, or seventh. If it's four, five, or eight, which are perfect, you follow this chart, which is a little bit simpler. You have essentially your perfect in the middle. And then if it's sharp, it goes up to augmented. Jeez, I can't even spell. That's cool. Augmented, and then if it's flat, it goes down to diminished. So you essentially skip the whole major minor thing. Essentially, the two are going to be the same type chart. It's just in the middle is your major and minor here, and for your perfect, it's just perfect. But either way, if you go sharp, it's augmented. If you go flat, it's either going to be minor or diminished in this case, or if you go flat, it's just going to be diminished. So again, this is all just going to be stuff you're going to have to just memorize. But as you get further into theory, it will start making more sense, and it won't be so much like, oh, i got to memorize this, you'll just already know. So anyway, now, if we try to follow our charts, and we go back to this example here, so again, we figured out the interval was 5, but now we have to figure out, it has a flat up here, so the flat tells us to go down, but is it major or perfect? Well, is 5 major or perfect? The 5 interval is perfect, so we come over to our perfect chart, and that was a flat, so we go down from perfect, which makes it diminished. So it will be, you want to use the little symbol, which is a circle for diminished. So it will essentially be a diminished fifth chord, the circle five, essentially. A little more confusing, but we'll do a couple examples, even though hopefully you guys went over it. So let's say we start, oh wow, that's not cool. Okay. Start in low B flat. Um, not B flat. Wow, C, because we're in trouble. I knew that. And I'll pick just here, and we'll be sharp. Sorry, when you guys can't see it for a second. So, what's going to be the interval? It's going to be an interval of three. Because one, two, three. So, we know it's three. But now, is three a major or minor chord? Three is major. So, we come to our handy dandy major chart. If it's major and it says it's going to be a sharp major, then we're just going to go up to augmented, which is the little plus sign. So it's going to be a plus three, which just means uh, augmented third chord. Um, the other example that I have is sometimes it's not going to start on C down on the bottom there. Sometimes it'll start on the up an octave C, so it'd start um, right up here, for instance. And then you still can work the chord the same way, so let's say you have a note just right above it. That's two different notes, if that's hard to tell. So that's just going to be our second interval, interval 2. And it's still going to work the same way. 
it's a number two. So is two major or perfect? It's major. So then it's just going to be a major two because there's no accidentals for that second note. So you don't have to worry about these crazy charts. These are only if you have accidentals. Anyway, so hopefully that gave you guys a decent idea of that. The other thing I will touch up on real quick is if the chords are inverted or how to invert chords. Again, we haven't gotten into a why inverting is necessary, but we will. So now, for example, let's do something like ah, this. Start on a C, go up to an A. So see what what's the interval of that so one two three four five six so it's a six is it a major or perfect we look at our chart it's major so it'd be an m6 now how are we going to invert that we're going to the opposite well we're going to have to remember that the opposite of major is minor and vice versa if the starting chord is major the inversion will be minor if the starting chord is minor the inversion will be major major so these two are going to alternate or if the chord starts as a augmented the inverted chord will be diminished and vice versa if it starts as diminished the augment the inverted chord will be augmented so for this chord we started as major so we already know the inverted chord is going to be minor and then for the number to figure out what the number would be you can just I'm sorry you do not write the starting note your your second note here your highest note you rewrite that over here because no matter what, you're going to keep that note. But this bottom note, you're going to take it up an octave. So it's a low C. So you're just going to take it up to high C over here. And you're going to draw another, another note. Okay, now figure out what's the interval between these two new notes. Which is one, two, three. So it's an interval of three. So a major sixth chord can be inverted into a minor third chord. Yeah, it's a lot. Let's do one more before we move on to scales. Let's say we have C in A sharp. Man, I hate when my camera does that. C in A sharp. So let's figure out the interval of it. Well, we already did A over on the other side, but Anyway, it's six. So it's an interval of six, but is it major or perfect? Well, first we have to figure out is six major or perfect? It's major, so okay. But it's a sharp major because of the accidental. So we go to our major chart, go up one because it's sharp, and now it's gonna be an augmented sixth. So it's augmented sixth. Okay, now let's invert it. So we'll start with drawing, drawing out the notes. So we keep the middle, the, high, the higher of the two notes. So in this case, the A sharp. We're going to rewrite the A sharp there. And then we're going to take the bottom note up an octave. So at low C, we're going to put it as high C over here. And then now we go about the whole process again. How, how much spaces in between what's the interval it's three okay that's cool then you figure out what's the opposite of a augmented chord well if we go down to our other little chart down here what's the opposite of augmented diminished so we already know it's going to then be a diminished third we don't have to think much more into it than that so that's that's about all that for the chord business for that class we went over. Now let's jump into a little bit of scales real quick. And basically I'm just gonna give you guys the formula for scales. 
for the scales and then you can literally figure out any scale after that okay so I know what you guys all have been waiting for the formula Wow, that was really bad. Okay, anyway, so we're just going to do, what's the best way to do this? Okay, yeah, we'll just do B-flat. Let's not, B-flat major, uh, in triple clef. Well, even though you guys can't see it, I'm just going to write out the B-flat major scale. And it doesn't have, and I think I'm doing it in quarter notes, but it really doesn't matter how you particularly write it in this case. But essentially just make sure you have all the notes there. Okay. So the formula is it's going to be in between the first two notes is going to be a whole step. In between the second and third note needs to be a whole step. I'll explain more of the whole steps and half steps in a second. The third and fourth note needs to be a half step. Fourth and fifth note whole step. 5th and 6th note, whole step, 6th and 7th note, whole step, and 7th and 8th note is a half step. Again, you might not totally understand that right this second, but I'm about to break it down a little bit for you guys. So, the trick is, whatever note you go to start on, let's say we're going to do key of F major, right? So... So we know an F major, what's it going to start on? You guessed it, F. So then once you have your starting note F, just write out your other notes, you know, in, in uh, scale order. So the G, A, B, C, D, E, all the way back up to F. And you don't need to worry about sharps or flats yet because that's what we're going to figure out. If you guys already know how many sharps or flats the key of F major has, good for you. But you got to learn how to also break it down. Alright, so now following our little formula, it says the first two notes need to be a whole step apart. So is the key, are the notes F to G a whole step? Think of a piano. Is it two, is it a white key, a black key, and then a white key to get from F to G? Or are the two keys right next to each other? So on a piano, it would be the white F key, then it'd be the black key, which is F sharp or G flat, and then you have the white G key. So the point is, F is a whole step up from G. So we know we're good here. This whole thing is a whole step, we don't have to do anything with it. Okay, now for the next one. G to A, is that a whole step? We need it to be a whole step, is it? Yes. And hopefully you guys understand whole steps and half steps at this point. If not, I can explain it in another video. Just let me know. Um, wow, that was did not look like a W. Okay, now A to B. Is that a half step? It needs to be a half step. It's not because you have the white A key, a black key, which is for A sharp, B flat, and then the B key. So that would be a whole step. We need it to be a half step. So the only way we're going to make it a half step is you never want to change the note you've already worked with. We've already worked with this A for this whole note step. So no matter what you're going to change, change the other note we haven't touched yet, which would be B in this case. So we got to change B to make this A to B a half step. The simplest way to do it is to flat B. Because A to B flat is a half step. You're going from the white A key up to only the black key, which is A sharp or B flat. So that's our half step. So that's how you know that in this case, the fourth note of the scale will be flat, which is B. So now this part is our half step, perfect. Now, our next step should be a whole step. Is B flat to C a whole step? Well, let's think, you have the black B flat key then you go up to the white B key, and then there is no black key in between B and C. So you go right from the B white key to the C white key. So that will be actually a whole step from B flat 
to the white key C. So that is a whole step, so we can just keep that as is. I didn't even write it in the right spot. So that will be a whole step. Okay, perfect. So now let's go from C to D. Is C to D a whole step? We need it to be a whole step. It is. Is D to E a whole step? It is. And then is E to F a half step? It is because the white E key is right next to the white F key. There is no black key in between. If there's a black key in between, we'd have to adjust the F or something to make it only half a step. But the work's already done for us because the white E key is next to the white F key. So that will be our half step. So now you have just charted out the key of F major. So F major has how many flats, how many sharps? Has just one flat. So that's how we're going to figure out um, the keys of each type of scale and how many sharps or flats they have. Because that will help us progress more within theory itself and not getting hung up so much on, well, I don't know how much F major has. Now we have a simple formula of how to figure it out. This formula is definitely going to take some practice to get used to doing any type of scale, but don't, you know, don't overthink it. The easiest way to think about it is, like I was saying, is with a piano. But if you're not so confident on, you know, piano, think of it on your instrument or in your vocal type warm-up scaly things. It's all basically the same. And just revert it back to that. Hopefully that will help. If not, I can explain it further or whatnot. Um, but this is definitely going to be an important concept to grasp because we're going to be building off this for sure. We're going to need to know how to write out scales, notate scales, to uh, start applying the chords more. Just like we spend all that time on all these glorious chords, it's all going to be der derived off scales. So we got to know how to write them. All right, well, I'm fun. I'm done blabbering. Hopefully that was a good review for you, for you guys. That was a good review for me anyway. And... Let me know if you guys need anything. Good day.